Welcome back to Sunlit Brush Strokes. Today we'll be adding our second layer of wet on wet with deep rich purples and we will work to achieve lively line movement in the dark sections of each pansy petal. Then we'll create some light shadows within the centers of our pansies to help bring depth and life to these cheerful flowers. We're going to be creating these vibrant colors using an ultramarine blue for our purple mixture. Now, when I started out, I started with a purple made with phthalo blue, but almost right away I changed directions and mix up a purple that's more vibrant. So if you watch past the first few minutes or so, you're going to be able to see the color mixtures that I've used for this project. The first thing I want to do is add a little bit of our detail here, but I wouldn't really call it detail because we're going to be still working wet on wet. So it's still going to be faded, but I want to get some of our color into this section here. And then next time we'll be adding some nice strong details. These are going to just be like looser, softer details. All right, let's go ahead and do this center piece that I'm talking about. And I'll kind of show you to show you what I mean about our soft wet on wet details, if that can be a word. Usually wet on wet isn't really the detail. It's just another layer of wet on wet. We're kind of building our way into um, stronger details. How's that? And this is where you really want to pay attention to the direction of the little lines that kind of run in the pansy. I don't know if there's a proper name for them. Ooh, okay, that is way too wet. Here, I'm just going to dab that off quick with a paper towel. That will be very wet. Okay, I'm just going to soak that up a little bit with my brush. That amount of purple on there, I could... Um, remove it completely, but I think we're going to be okay because I'm covering that. So just way too wet. So that's a situation where I might have to let this dry for just a quick second. Okay, I'm going to dry the ferrule of my brush and try this again. I'm just going to work with the tip of my brush and try and get these lines here. Okay, it's behaving much more what I was expecting last time. <laughs> Sorry about that surprise. Okay, just gonna do this and as you can see everything's really really wet as I'm doing it still but I'm get getting more detail than I did before so I'm just going to go back and forth kind of almost in a swing swinging motion to get these lines happening here and we will be getting more strong details next time so and when you start to run out of paint you can just dip back in and again if you're feeling really wet. My paint is quite concentrated here, which is a good thing because it doesn't run around as much. But if you're feeling too wet, just dab the ferrule of your brush again so that you soak some of that water out. And by squeezing it here with your paper towel rather than the tip, you're going to leave more pigment in the tip of the brush. Again, I'm moving myself kind of around my painting. If you want to move your painting rather than your body, you can do that. But I'm just trying to move, move around so I kind of keep this swinging motion kind of going along with the curving of the petal and the little lines that are in the petal. So just really pay attention to that as you do this. And be very careful as you work your way up here. We're going to achieve some of this detail next time with a little bit more hard on, or sorry, wet on dry. So just be careful as you work your way towards the center of the petals. Because that purple and yellow don't mix that well together. We're going to be using a purple next time that's a little bit more of a um, red purple and so don't go too crazy with this purple that we've got here it's a little bit more blue so just keep that in mind and you can come back with another layer if you want while it's still wet and deepen that to get the values even darker just be careful that when you're doing this there's a chance you could overwork and make things a little bit goofy like this is almost looking blurry so I'm probably going to have to come in there and straighten things up a little bit. Again, I'm using a, a very light touch so that I can keep these lines kind of fine and flowy. And if you feel like things are kind of like almost getting overboard or too dark or too blot, um, blotched out, you can always take your dry, thirsty brush and just kind of lift the other direction. So you're going to have to wash your brush, dry your brush often. You don't want to have a dirty brush doing this. You're going to, you can, you know, do this a few times and then you're going to have to probably wash your brush out before you um, carry on because you're going to end up making a bigger mess if your brush is not clean when you're doing this. So this brush is cleaned. So I wash up my water, dry it off on my paper towel 
and then I can kind of lift and you know control these lines a little bit but like I said clean brush is essential here Ooh, I'm kind of getting out where I want to be I'm just gonna fade that out a little bit and then I'll have to create a little bit more detail there later okay let's move on before we overwork that shape any further not so sure I like that color. I think I would have preferred to be a little bit more on the red side. So I'm just gonna quickly lift, put a little bit of water on here and then blot, lift, do whatever I need to do and um, lift whatever I can and I will be back and I will we'll put a little bit more red on top. So I went ahead and made myself a kind of a blend of different purples. I've got one that's a little bit more on the red side, kind of a pinky purple. And then I've got this one over here that's more on the blue side. And then I actually decided to do a mixture of quinacridone rose and ultramarine blue. Um, and it's a bit more vibrant. So I've got some varieties of purple. So that way, I'm just gonna be honest here. Sometimes I feel like when I actually get it on the paper, it helps me make my decision about what I'm actually after. Sometimes just having them on the swatches, I'm like, you know, it has to be layered on there, especially because I'm trying to cover up this bluey color now. So I've got a few purples in this range. I'll bring them up to the camera closer if you want to take a look at those. And rather than come directly into this shape to start with, I'm going to get this shape something that I'm happy with. Then I'll kind of come kind of work my way around. And um, that way I'm not just jumping right into that shape trying to fix it. So I'm just coming in here and I'm wetting this one. I'm just curious to see how the ultramarine purple or whatever the the purple that I made with the ultramarine blue I'm just curious to see how that's going to work so again I'm working in the same Ooh, that is really pretty actually I like that I'm working in the same direction that I was doing these shapes earlier because of course these are all moving the same way but I'm just getting some nice deep darks and it, just working in the area where we have this beautiful characteristic deep purple that's on the pansy Kind of what makes it look like it's a smiling face, right? Yes, I'm really liking that color. Whoops, I did a little slop there with my brush. Okay, yes, happy with that color. So I think that's what I'm probably going to use. I might have to do a combination of things down there to get those working, but... Let's go over here. Again, wet the shape. And I'm just dabbing it off now because I realize I've got a lot of water. And in this case, I am wanting things just that bit drier than I was having them earlier. Again, I'm kind of just swing, swinging my brush almost a little bit with this motion to kind of get my curve. I'm going to go ahead and work on this pansy right here and maybe do maybe this shape and well, this one's, yeah, it's actually dry enough right there. I can probably do that. So I'm going to work on a couple of shapes on this one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and work on this shape down here. This one is really interesting, the way that these little lines kind of, they have very interesting movement here because of the, the way that this is really kind of almost turned on its side. It's kind of a, not quite a side profile, almost like maybe a three quarters, <laughs> the way it's turned. It's very beautiful. I love the way it's kind of turning here, but it's going to make the little lines a little more interesting for us to paint. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, I'm I'm just still using that same purple, the one that had kind of a mixture of quinacridone rose and ultramarine blue. I just find I'm liking the vibrancy of that. So hmm, that is very wet. I'm just gonna soak that up a bit. When I really want these vibrant purples, I'm gonna have to stick with my ultramarine blue. I'm leaving, trying to leave a gap kind of right here because this is where this petal, even though it's all one petal, it kind of folds here. And so this almost acts like it's in front of this one back here, but it's all one, it's all one petal. It's just the way that it's folded. I want to try and keep some whites preserved here. So I might even let it dry a little bit more before I try and 
push those to get the full detail, but, or I should say not even full detail because again, we're working wet on wet, so you don't get the intense details you'll get if you're wet on dry, but let's just work in the areas that are driest first, and then we'll come back into those wetter areas. And I want this to be kind of blurry again, as I mentioned, mentioned before, but when I'm close to the edge of the painting, I really don't want to be pushing my details that much anyways. Okay, there's some interesting curving happening here. All right, the shape is kind of drying a little bit more, so I can kind of achieve a little bit more of the details coming down here. I'm just lifting a tiny bit of this paint out, some of the purples, so I can see a little bit more of that yellow shining through because I want to get a little bit more of a purpley red when I get really nice and close to the center of this little pansy. And just soften that edge and I'm probably going to dab it with a paper towel just because that's, I can tell it wants to run into my yellow a little bit. Okay, just dabbing that off a bit because it's just just encroaching on the yellow just a bit more than I would like. So, Okay, I'm going to leave it like that for now. I'll get the details right on the next layer. And I can actually go ahead and work into this petal because, as I mentioned before, um, these little white areas are allowing us to do so. I'll probably deepen this little stripe later with a different color because it is very distracting right there. So I went ahead and wet that and then again adding my purple here. I'm going to use this dark purple and kind of come up and kind of seal off that white stripe because I don't think we need it after here. Just let these two shapes blend together a little bit down this way. And I'm going to guide this upwards a little bit. And the brush I'm doing that with is drier, so that's what it's allowing me to do. The really wet one will just bleed around, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and do this little shape. It's sort of on its own here, and I'm not doing much to it. I'm just going to put a little bit of the darker purple kind of as we get closer to the center of the, pe the pansy. And now we have to kind of skip over, so I'm going to go and do this one because it's not touching anything that's wet. And just a few, few tiny little details. We don't need much in this one. I'm using this brush with the orange handle. I'm going to try and keep this as my water brush. Maybe that'll help when you're watching to kind of go, oh, she's picking up the water now. Now she's picking up the paint. Sometimes it's really obvious what I'm doing, but sometimes I just kind of almost interchangeably go from one brush to the next and I don't always say which one I've got. So maybe if I keep this one for my water, that'll help. We'll see. <laughs> see if I can at least do something to make it more clear to you guys what I'm doing when. And what's happening along this edge is really kind of a wet on dry technique and I'm getting a nice hard edge there, but then where the water's running or where the water is, the paint's just running up and it's creating these beautiful kind of soft creases, folds, lines, and, and in this case, the, the beautiful pigment pigmentation of the pansy. I don't know if there's a proper name for the way the pansy has these little cute, I don't know. These smiley faces on it. I'm not sure if there's a name for the parts of the pansy. I guess I should learn. Truly, you don't have to be overly smart with your um, botany or your, your animal anatomy, anything like that when you're an artist. I had a very, very young student um, instructing me on the different parts of the horse. This is the barrel and this is this and this is that. She was telling me everything and I knew nothing about what a horse, what their different parts are and all I could do is just like, you know, draw it, <laughs> paint it. I didn't know all the names and you really don't need to. Sometimes naming all the parts can make you actually focus too much on what you think you see rather than what you actually see or what's in front of you. So truth be told, you don't really need to know all the names of 
a flower or a plant or an animal to be able to realistically draw it or paint it. Sometimes my students teach me more about the subject matter than I'm able to teach them. Some of the my I think even some of my line directions a little bit off here, so I'm just gonna lift a little bit. I think I'm liking that a bit more. Again, we're gonna be getting a little bit stronger details later, so we'll just leave that in for now. And we could actually go ahead and do this shape right here again just because we've got that little bit of white happening there, it's kind of creating a little bit of a wall that allows us to add water and of course not have the water bleed because we're not touching. So sometimes you can intentionally and sometimes I do intentionally leave little white gaps um, between petals and that allows me to, you know, just kind of go from one petal to another. And I actually like the look of a little bit more white in my work. I just I don't do it all the time. Sometimes I leave the white space and sometimes I don't, depends on the look I'm after and I suppose even the mood that I'm in. I'm just gonna give this a quick minute to sort of dry because, or soak in, whatever combination. I feel like I'm a bit wetter than I'd like to be. And I'm also gonna grab that paper towel and just blot a little bit again. I'd like to be able to do some of this detail with a little bit of a warmer purple. So blot that a little bit. And like I said, I'm going to just give that a minute to, to just soak in, dry, and then I will come in with a few more details. Well, that's drying. Why don't I try this one down here? And as I come up to this little white shape, I'm just kind of letting it have a jagged edge because it's has almost like a little fuzzy look, you know how pansies are. Another thing that can help like with, with not getting like those little goopy blooms I sometimes get is if you kind of end your brush stroke kind of in the darker area rather than in the lighter area, that can help as well. It's when I kind of swing out that sometimes I end up with that funny little bloom. So. All right, I'm coming back up here now where things are probably a little bit drier. I can just achieve a little bit more detail. Oh yes, it's a much, it's gotten much drier. Almost almost too dry. We're almost starting to get our wet on dry technique, but it is still wet, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some of this and then we'll just this one may or may not need any anything on our next next layer because I'm getting pretty detailed and dark already. And again, remember when you're working this dark and you're working next to another petal, this is where you can kind of create that kind of ruffled edge. On the pedal in front of it with how you kind of do your little brush brush work here. Since things are a little bit drier I'm going to come in with a damp brush and just soften some of these edges ever so slightly and when I take a brush stroke, then I'm washing my brush, drying my brush, and coming back in. Um, sometimes I can just dry it, but as soon as I start to notice I'm like dragging paint around, I have to definitely wash it because dragging paint is just going to make a mess. I'm doing a little bit of dragging there, so I've got to be really careful with that. Wash my brush again. I probably have to call this stop or I'm going to overwork it. And there's just a certain time in your work where you can find yourself going, ooh, I'm making a mess. And when that happens, it's best to just kind of do what you need to do to get it, you know, if you've got anything you really don't like, you know, lift that off. Otherwise, just let it dry. Then you can come in and get the details that you're really after on your next layer. So that's one thing to know about watercolor. It really is best to just, once things start to go a little bit goofy, it means it's in a weird stage of dryness, leave it alone. I'm going to go ahead and do this petal. As you can see, I'm just jumping around from 
one side of the painting to another because I want to be working in shapes that are not touching another wet shape. And I need to be very careful that I don't cover this little cute petal that we tried to preserve before. I'll try and work around it. And this one, as I said, it doesn't have much to it. It's got a few um, soft little lines here and that's it. We're kind of moving this direction. Ooh, I'm starting to ruin my little petal there. Miss that last stroke. Let's see if I can lift that out a bit. Okay, good enough. I'm gonna leave that be, let it dry. Um, don't put any dark purple near it because it will bleed into there. We can always try and um, work that later if we decide we want to. Might do a tiny bit of something here. It doesn't have much detail at all, but it's a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bit. All right, what do you say? I think it's time we go fix this one. Now that we have a better feel for the purple that we were after, we can, we'll go ahead and use the purple I have been using, which is the one that I had made, like I said, with the ultramarine blue. Yeah, I'm pretty wet, but I'm gonna go do a few of these strokes and then I'll come back in. And it might cover just fine, just with this purple. This is a beautiful color. Again, if I wanna keep those strokes going that way, I can. I'm just grabbing a little bit of Pernacridone Rose and I'm just going to put it in my palette here alongside this one. Again, this is my, my um, purple with the ultramarine blue still, but I'm just adding a tiny bit more Pernacridone Rose to it just so that I have a tiny little bit more of a pink color to kind of co counteract that, that blue that's underneath it there. Just put it in a few spots. Again, I'm pretty wet, so I'm because I'm so wet, I'm kind of sticking closer to the center of this shape um, rather than trying to do these fine details. I'm just going to give it just a minute to kind of soak in and then I will try the details again because like I said, it's it's just pretty wet still. I'm going to come this way a little bit. This pinky color is going on top of that yellow really beautifully. So let's just go ahead and pull it into the yellow since it's cooperating over there. It is drier over here. Of course, I didn't wet my yellows so much. Okay, <laughs> what I'm doing now is what you would call wet on dry. <laughs> so that's really what I'm planning to do in my next stage, but let's just moisten that a little bit with water. I do like the way that this kind of purple red is kind of going on top of that yellow. That's kind of what I'm after eventually getting. I just, like I said, I'm not really planning. I wasn't planning to get that much detail in this layer. So, but you know what, if you get it in one layer, that's okay. Um, if we don't need to do it next time, we don't have to do it next time, but I'm going to, again, do the same thing. Just grab my paper towel and kind of stop the bleed because it's wanting to just come running into the yellow more than I want it to. So we'll just kind of hit pause with the paper towel. And then I'm going to, I think this is starting to dry. So I'm gonna carry on. I've still got kind of that pinky, pinky version or reddish version of the ultramarine blue. So I'm still gonna carry on with this one for a little bit, but I might go back into this one. And again, both of these are made with the ultramarine blue. That's in contrast to the phthalo blue, which is what I've usually been using, but I'm really liking the ultramarine blue today. It's just allowing me to be a little bit more vibrant with my purples, which makes sense because it's a blue that is a bit of a purple blue. Okay, we're definitely drying enough down here now, so. Try and keep a little bit of a swing in my motion, our motion here. Because I'm dry enough, I can swing out this way and get a very nice fine line as I come out this way. Again, this is a really, it really is a matter of how dry I am, how dry my brush is, how dry my paper is. And um, I'm holding my brush quite lightly so that I can get just a very gentle swing there. That actually worked better on that side. Probably has something to do with me being right-handed, maybe. I'm gonna try and change positions here. That's another thing to keep in mind. Sometimes when you're doing something that's kind of symmetrical, one side can be easier than the other. And I kind of think that has to do with you know, whether you, the whole right hand, left handed kind of thing. Okay. 
think I'm gonna call that good, except that there's a couple things there I wanna kinda just lift a little bit. I think that looks a little bit goofy over there. Let's see if I can lift it with my water brush. This is kind of a softer brush though, so I need to grab one of my firmer brushes. There was a shadow there, so I, I actually used water on my brush and almost created that since I had, I guess I should say a combination of water and some of this purple kind of all at the right place at the right time. It was not planned. Sometimes when you're like, oh, this is working. <laughs> I wasn't planning to do that at that step, but I do have an area for a shadow there. So let's see, where do we want to head next? This shape here really doesn't have much to it. And this one actually doesn't have any of the like extra dark purple details. So I'm just gonna wet this one really quickly. And as I said, there's not much to put on it. So I'll just do that really quick and then move on. And I'm not even getting that shape perfectly wet everywhere. And just throw a few of these little purple lines in here. Just make sure I'm happy with my, I'm actually a little on the dry side. Adding a little bit of water to kind of smooth that out. And I think I'm going to call it good for that one. And as I said, this one doesn't really have anything. I could take artistic license and put a little something there, maybe. Should I? Yeah, let's do that. Let's take artistic license and just put a little something there. It just feels kind of lonely if it doesn't have anything. That's going to be enough. I don't want much because like I said, there was, there's really no detail there. I just feel like hmm, I could have a little bit of this purple. All right, we can work on a couple shapes in the back here, but otherwise we are getting wet in a lot of places and I'm kind of thinking we're almost going to have to dry it, but let's see what we can do before we have to do that. I think even there I could, yeah, let's do this one. This one seems dry, like the shapes around it are dry enough. I could do this one back here. And again, it's another one of these that doesn't really have a whole lot of detail anyways. There's just a tiny little bit, like a few little of these purple lines. Just adding some of that deep dark purple on the edge of this one. And then I'll just blend it out a tiny, tiny bit. Again, these are touching, but they're so dark. And this sec section here isn't especially wet, I don't think. So I think I can get away with doing this. This shape here can get, get some details now or some dark purples. And again, I'm gonna make sure I get a little bit of a jagged edge around this little white shape. And I'm going to fill in this tiny little, there's a funny little shape here that's kind of like it's a petal that's in the back. So it's just kind of shining through here. And you know what? I'm going to drop drop a little bit more of the kind of the quinacridone rose color in there because it is kind of more of a pinky color. And um, that makes sense because the petals themselves have more pink undertone before the purple. And that's standing out a bit like a sore thumb, so I'm just dabbing it off. Coming in here with a little bit more purple. I'm not doing any really fancy wet on wet techniques. That was just a little fine tuning there. All right, I'm dry enough. I can come over here. So I'm going to go ahead, wet it, and then just repeat our steps here. It gets very deep and very dark in this area here. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in. And again, I'm thinking I might just grab a little bit of a pink or purple so that I can work kind of more towards the center of this. I actually don't even mind how that looks just like that. Um, it's definitely, as I said, we're really, that's more of a, a wet on dry technique. I'm just going to 
just soften it a little bit with my paper towel again so that's not quite as dark a contrast. And again, I still have that pinky color on my brush, but I'm just going to fill that area in and then work my way down and I will grab some of my darker purple again, the one that doesn't have as much of the quinacridone in it and just make sure I'm nice and deep and dark right here because this, as I said, this section is nice and dark in the reference photo and I like it that way. And again, we're going to be getting some details later, so we have not quite finished this. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do this section here. It's pretty much just filling it in solid with this dark purple. I didn't even wet it. Look at that. I didn't even do any wet on wet because it's just so dark. I just figure I could probably fill it in. And when I get close to this, as you know, we're just kind of doing a jagged edge. So again, that's a hard edge. So this little section is a wet on dry piece. And I'm closing that white section up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is just use my water and just soften things over on this side of it. So it's a little bit of a gradation and it's not a solid deep dark purple. There's a little bit of light coming through. I think the only piece I need to add a little bit of purple is just this shape, but of course I am quite wet right here. I'm going to give it a quick dry with the hair dryer and then I will fill that shape in and I think that is that for that look, that stage. All right, so I went ahead and dried this so I can go ahead and do this shape really quickly here. Now, since I have that kind of purple red going that I used in here. I really, really like how the center of this one turned out where that transition is. I think I'm just going to try and see if I can make that happen on these ones. Now these, these have already dried, so I'm going to be re-wetting them and adding some of that really purple red there. And I might even just do a little bit of rubbing on that to lift out the hard edges. So I'll show you how I'm going to go about doing that. I'll just quickly make sure I have enough of my red purple. And again, this is my same purple that I was using for everything but I'm gonna mix it with my red. Probably need a little more ultramarine blue there to balance it out. Maybe not such a hot idea to hold your palette on top of your painting. Okay, I think I like that color. I can always just, I'm just grabbing some old, um, of my quinacridone rose out of my other palette here, but I think I'm liking that color. So I've got that. And I'm gonna just do one at a time. So I'll just go ahead and wet this one at the top. Let's zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to come up almost to the top of the yellow. Almost, I've got this little, like, I don't know, I guess that's where the stamen and whatever are up there. The stigma of the little pansies. So I'm not wetting at the very top, but I wet some of my yellow here. And then I'm just going to kind of drop this in where that transition is. And then I'm going to just damp, get my brush kind of drier, dab the ferrule. Then I'll just, I'm actually kind of using a wet on wet or wet on dry technique to just drag that around a little bit. This this is this is just getting dragged into the purple and then I'm letting it kind of mingle into the yellow. And of course as you know the yellow is dry. I'm just going to kind of direct it a little bit. I might have a little bit too much red here. We'll see. It's quite red in the reference and I like it that way because I feel like that reddish color really blends nicely into the yellow. So I'm just going to grab my piece of paper towel and just dab to kind of get it to kind of get under control. Stop bleeding as much. Hmm. Not liking the, that one as much. Let's see how I, how I can do this. A little bit of water and blend these out. So this is kind of one of my brushes from earlier. It had some purple on it still. Just try to blend this out a little bit, make them I want a smooth transition from the yellow into the reddish color. It's my water brush. Again, I don't know how this is gonna work. Sometimes you just have to play with it until it goes the way you want it to. Ooh, lots of water now. 
just feel like I'm losing my yellow. Adding yellow at this point might be a little bit of a scary proposition though. Okay, so that is bleeding into there like crazy. I'm just gonna dab it again with my paper towel. I feel like I definitely lost some of my yellow, so that might, I'm gonna try and do the same thing down below and see if it works better. And um, I can always come in with a bit of yellow very, very carefully later. I'm very cautious about putting yellow in at a later stage of the painting, but I've definitely lost yellow there. And if I don't have too many colors under the yellow, I might be able to get away with it. I'm going to add a little bit of this golden yellow. So this yellow in my palette here is a little bit of quinacridone rose mixed with the yellow. So it's not quite, it's, it's not straight out of the tube. I'm just going to see if I can throw a bit more yellow in there to help with the way the transition's happening. This is a risky thing I'm doing. So you guys get to watch me take some scary risks. Let's see if I can make that kind of transition between the yellow and the red. And if not, I can just lift it out. I'm gonna put a bit more of the straight yellow. Yeah, you guys are really seeing me fuss. And a little bit, what I would consider a little bit of more challenging part of the paint. And by the way, I've got yellow on my brush, even though I have an orange handle here. Ahem, <clears throat> I've grabbed paint this time. I'm not gonna to touch that anymore on the yellow because I think I'm making a mess of it. Might just put a tiny bit more of the red there. Or I should say the red purple. Okay, that was an interesting piece of the painting. Let's try this again down here. I'm just using a wet brush. This is the kind of a firmer brush and I'm rubbing out the details that I had here. I'm gonna wet the shape. And since the yellow is already lifting, I might as well just go ahead and just throw in some yellow right now. And yes, I'm throwing water Sorry, I'm throwing my yellow on with my, um, hmm, usually what I, I would consider my lifting brush, but now I'm just going to go ahead with my reddish color and just do this and let it blend into my yellow. I'm doing some strokes that hopefully will blend into the yellow and into the purple, but it's a little bit more of the, the reddish, the reddish purple. I think I kind of like that transition. I'm liking how the transitions are working better. That was a little bit scary, but I think I'm happy. Now this one looks a little too purple compared to everybody else. So I guess we better make it kind of equal. Maybe, I don't know, it doesn't have, you don't have to make things equal in a painting, but I do like that red. So I'm just gonna Put that reddish purple on there. I'm going to go ahead with my water and just create a little bit of dabbing and hopefully a transition. Again, I'm just, this is an experiment. And I've still got my reddish purple on my brush. Yeah, I think I like that a little bit better. I'm gonna not touch it. Just let it dry and see how it all works out. So there's a few places on this picture where there are shadows. So what I want to do is make kind of a shadow color and I'm just going to make a mixture of all of my primaries. I'm just going to palette here. I could have grabbed this purple color because I've got quinacridone rose in it but I just grabbed some quinacridone rose straight off of that one and I'll mix it in here and then I'll throw a little bit of the yellow and I might as well grab it off of here since then I'm not um, contaminating these beautiful clean mixtures here. And I'm just going to kind of keep adding until I feel like I've got a Kind of almost like a neutral, I don't know if you want to say grayish black. This is a situation where I'm not even 100% sure what color I'm after until I get it on my picture. Um, often I just find I'm like, okay, I need a shadow color, but I have to, I'm going to have to play around and see when I actually get it on there, which colors are working the best. 
in the context of the painting. So sometimes you can't tell that till you really get it on your picture. So I've got a couple options. One's a little bit more on the purpley blue black side and the other one's a little more red. So what I'm after is to create a little bit of shading kind of within these little white, little fuzzy white things because they're not perfectly solid white shapes, are they? So I'm just going to go in and put some water into this one. And then I'm going to try my shadow colors that I have here and see what I think of them. I'm going to try the one that's kind of more on the blue side first. Basically, I'm going to do this with a little bit of a shaking motion so that I get a little bit of a jagged look here. Am I happy with that shadow color? Could have even probably had a little bit more yellow in it. So I've mixed myself kind of a shadow color using um, all three primaries. So I've kind of got like a bit of a blackish gray color. And this is where the phthalo blue actually does work better than the ultramarine blue, just because um, when you're making small mixtures, sometimes, I don't know, I was finding my ultramarine blue was sinking too fast for my liking, but you can use whichever blue you want. But just, you can even, if you have like a mixing kind of gray or um, neutral color, you can use that as well. But I just made a mixture of my primaries and I had a little bit of both ultramarine and phthalo blue in there, partly because I started with the ultramarine and then I was like, eh, I need something that's a little bit lighter weight, just the phthalo blue doesn't sink as much. So I use phthalo blue as well. I'm not sure this is getting a little bit too dark, but it's helping. I'm just going to grab paper towel and dab that off a bit. I'm just trying to create a little bit of depth in this shape here. I'm going to put a little bit of that shadow color on this one. Okay, that's very dark. I'm just trying, I'm going to go ahead and lift that out. Oof, that's dark. Basically, I'm trying to knock some of the intensity out of the whites that are on these little white shapes, but I will say I put a lot of more paint than I would have liked to for shots. So just lifting a little bit. Drop a little bit of this greeny kind of color in here too. I don't know. There's just, to me, I'm seeing a little bit of gray, a little bit of green. So I'm just kind of doing a combination of things and dropping them on here. And this is where you don't have to be so persnickety. I'm just adding a few details with some of the colors I'm seeing in these white, white spots, but I'm really just trying to knock down the intensity. So you could use, if you have a, like a Payne's gray even, or just a mixing color, you have some people I've heard use like shape shadow mixing colors. I don't really use those, but I just made a color out of a little bit of all three primaries. And um, one of them was a little more gray, and now I'm just throwing a little bit of green because I feel like that green, I don't know, I'm seeing a little bit of green being cast into this shape. So I'm gonna wet it, and let's put a little bit less of that shadow this time. So I'm gonna grab some of my shadow mixture that I made. Something like that color. I'm not even sure I'm 100% happy with it, but it's just kind of a very neutral, kind of a grayish looking color. And I'm just going to move that around with my wet brush. And I don't actually mind if this white under here ends up quite dark because it is very much in the shadow. And this little shape here is in the shadow. And there's even some shadow. Kind of over here. And again, I'm doing a little bit of dotting. I actually like how I did that one because it actually looks a little bit fuzzy. I like that. I might have to do that on my next one. I'm going to lift just a little bit off the edge here. The light is shining just a little bit on the white on this side, but I would say a lot of this little white shape is in shadow in this particular pansy. If you want to play around with that technique I was just showing you, I'm just going to go ahead and pretend I've got two of these little things on the, the pansy, these cute little fuzzy things on it. Let's just pretend that that's these two shapes here. You're going to go ahead and put water into both of them. And then use your gray and in the areas that are more shaded, kind of just dot this little bit, the little bit of um, gray shadow onto there. And again, I'm kind of using this like, I don't know, dotting, <laughs> just making my brush kind of bounce up and down. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the water brush. So again, I'm kind of like bouncing it around a little bit, 
and I'm getting a little bit of texture from doing that. So that's what I'm doing on the little white shapes where they need a little bit of toning down because like I say, they're just a bit bright. But if you want to practice that technique, you can just do that on a piece of paper and then come in and do all of the shapes on your painting. So while I'm at it, I'm going to take that gray along with a little bit of kind of this pinky color I was messing around with. Let's see what, I think I kind of like that color, something like that. Basically you want something that's sort of a gray color, but maybe not quite as, as bluey gray as this one. And I'm going to also do the shadow that I'm seeing right on the pansy. So where I'm seeing shadows within the pansy, I'm going to create just a hard edge. So I'm going to come in here like this. And I'm not worrying about wetting my shape or anything first. I'm just basically trying to lightly paint in a shadow shape because I see a shadow shape here. And if you see any shadow shapes anywhere else, you can just, within your reference photo, whatever, you can just add those in with a nice light shadow color like what I've just made. So kind of a gray that's a bit, a little bit more on the, I don't know, pinky purple side. It's sort of sort of is like the color of the pansy but just more grayed down more of a shadow color and yet definitely not like I say I didn't want to go as blue as the one that I was using here and if you're so inclined you could do that in a few other places um, on your pansy where you're seeing some shadows being cast but I don't think it's necessary it's just a nice little touch if you want to add it I might just add it for fun the main places I'm seeing it are on these petals here and this one I'm actually going to fade out because I feel like that's a bit strong. But it's just helping to kind of give the impression that that leaf is, or sorry, that petal is kind of curved downwards and the sunlight's not really hitting it there, right there. But like I say, totally optional. And this shadow here, I'm going to actually go a little bit more of the bluey color just because I did get it pretty purple earlier when I was painting my details so. or I should say my wet on wet details they weren't really strong details were they a little more shadow color on this one here it just is it really isn't that bright white putting a little bit of shadow where these little nice white curvy things are happening Again, because they're not pure white. I'm just seeing a few spots in my white areas where I want to push the shadows just a little bit further. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that in a few small areas. Now before I move on to our wet on dry details next time, I just want to tweak the center of this pansy here. Where the colors are transitioning from yellow to purple, I don't quite like how that's happening so abruptly right here. These ones are okay. I could have gone a little bit more of a red-orange, but I'm just going to start with this one and get it to the place I'm happy with it before I do anything else. I'm going to start by just using a damp brush and try and lift out some of the shapes and see what I have underneath here that will um, show for us. Otherwise, I might have to come in here and throw a little bit of, like I say, maybe like a reddish color on top. We'll see. Just using water right now, just lifting a little bit. And I'm kind of rubbing a little bit to try and create a little bit of a soft um, transition there. Okay, so dab that. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of yellow. Kind of just replenish the yellow I kind of picked out of there. Plus, then I'll go ahead and get a bit of the quinacridone rose and create a bit of a transition color here. There's a little bit of a rust color here in my palette, so I think I'm going to just try grabbing that along with a little bit of quinacridone rose and just see what color I get and put it on the painting, see how it looks. It's a little bit of an experiment here. And the, the yellow is still wet, so the colors are intermingling a little bit. And I actually think I'm liking that better. I'm just going to go ahead and use a bit of water and move things around a bit. And then we'll see. Yeah, I think I'm happier with that. I'm just going to kind of just try and gently blend this downwards a little bit so it doesn't have a hard edge. 
maybe just a tiny bit more of that color down here. I say sometimes you can just say, you know what, it's good enough. You're happy. It's not, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as what you're seeing in your photo to call it good. As long as it's something that you're happy with. And I'm not happy with that yet, but I'm going to get more purples on there. So I'm going to just try the same thing over here. I don't want to um, overdo or be overly persnickety. I don't like that, but same time I want to get it to the place I'm more or less happy with it. And that's a decision you kind of have to just make yourself. Sometimes it's better to just say, you know what, good enough, and call it call it a day. So don't ever push yourself beyond what you feel like you want to do at any given painting. You can always experiment and push yourself more the next time. Now using that rust color, I'm kind of running the risk of, oops, went out of the lines there. Oops. I'm running the risk of creating kind of mud because that orange and the purple aren't really the best um, in this particular situation. I don't want a muddy color there. It could be beautiful in the background, but I didn't want it too muddy right here. Okay, putting a little bit of my purple color here to try and blend this out, create a better gradation between these. damp brush I'll just drag it around okay I think I'm not gonna fuss with that anymore just put a smidge in a little bit of yellow I really feel like I'm getting getting to the point I'm overworking so if you're wanting to call yours good as is just leave it be just going back and forth between that yellow and kind of my reds and purples, oranges. The main thing I'm keeping in mind as I do this transition here is the color wheel. Even though my colors aren't as intense and bright as what I have on this color wheel, I'm still thinking about working my way from the yellow down towards the purple a little bit gradually. I'm trying to not have a jump from yellow to purple just like that. I don't want to have a little bit of a transition happening. So that's why I'm kind of you know, going with the yellow and then thinking a little bit of an orangey color and then more of the rosy color and then to the purple. Um, and so I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm going to leave the other two on here the way they are. And then next time we'll go in with some wet on dry detail and that's going to really bring our pansies to life. Until then, I hope this tutorial has brought a little taste of God's beauty and peace into your everyday life and that it's inspired you to continue enjoying your own creative journey. See you again next time. Bye.